Hello, my name is Johan Falk. Thank you for taking a look at the game called Andromeda. It is an adventure game in urban fantasy for 1 to 6 players, aged 13 and above, as you might see here. Key characteristics of the game, it's played in campaigns consisting of chapters. Playing time is between half an hour and two hours, depending on the campaign and chapter you play. It's cooperative for most campaigns. Uh, the game consists of a lot of character improvement. Uh, you build your character and improve it during the game, that's a large part of it. Um, it has a lot of adventure cards revealing the story as you play, and it has, if I may say so, uh, very too clever dice mechanics and a fair bit of dice management. That's how you become good at playing this game. Unique selling points? Well, uh, you learn the game not by reading the rulebook, but by playing the introduction campaign. You learn the, the rules and also the uh, game world uh, in that way, so you can more or less start playing immediately. Uh, the currency in the game is also used for rerolls, which I think is pretty unique. Uh, it has a strong story and an immersive world also, which is not unique, of course, but uh, many games have this, but this story is uh, different from er anything else I've heard. So what is the story? Uh, the players are kids in a world, in a city, uh, defending the world against the nefarious Andromeda. She does not want to kill everyone, uh, as you might uh, think, but she wants to take the will from people and the kids uh, and turn them into unknowing slaves. And the kids are agents who, who can try to stop this. Andromeda herself is weak, uh, but she has uh, helpers, uh, the uh, humans called Quellers, want to steal the imagination from, from the kids. Uh, and she also has mysterious uh, creatures called uh, drainers who, who steal will from, from people. Uh, these are invisible to everyone except these kid agents. Uh, the kids are equipped with um, skills uh, and also will and imagination. Will is represented by uh, flames and fantasy. Imagination is represented by uh, butterflies. Uh, the kids can, of course, uh, meet good things as well. They can uh, have uh, interesting encounters. They uh, can find small useful objects and larger useful objects. They can also learn so-called imagination powers, which allows them to use their imagination to change things in the world around them. So the actual gameplay, here's the board. Uh, it's, it, these are all concept, well, uh, uh, sketch images, placeholder images. Uh, the round is pretty basic. You roll, you move, you perform actions, and you advance Andromeda's agenda. agenda. Uh, on the board, we have circular uh, spaces. These are normal spaces. You draw an adventure card and resolve it. This is the smallest game loop in the game. Uh, and the square spaces are special occasions where you can perform particular actions, doing quests, uh, training skills, uh, learning new imagination powers, things like that, uh, finding items or buying items as well. This is uh, the larger game loop, the strategic game loop. 3D6 is used in a number of ways in this game. Uh, we have movement. You roll 3d6 and count how many equals you get. So you can move normally one to three steps in, uh, uh, each time. Uh, skill checks, uh, done as usual, sum the, game, uh, the dice up, add any uh, modifiers and, and skill values. If you get an exact match to your uh, required value, that's a perfect roll, and you get three so-called time stones, these, uh, this currency in the game. If you get a triplet when you uh, make a skill check, you level up if that triplet is above your current skill level. Any time you roll a straight, you get flow, and you receive one time stone. And at any time, you may spend one time stone to re-roll a die that you just rolled. Uh, Andromeda's agenda is something limited in the game, and pressing the players to move onwards. You have a number of black crystals moving on a track, uh, and every time, and every round, uh, a stone moves one to three steps downwards. When you reach the, the bottom, all players lose one time stone each. When the track is filled, the scenario end is triggered, usually meaning that the players lose. Which brings us to the campaigns. It's an introduction campaign consisting of five chapters. Uh, playing time varies. The, the last and lo longest chapter is about one hour, maybe a bit less. It introduces the world and the core rules, uh, as I said. Every campaign has uh, rule tweaks to it uh, and, and special conditions that apply. Uh, when, playing, when you play the introduction campaign, you also unlock uh, new characters and helpers. And I want to show them before ending this presentation. You have a number of different uh, characters you can play or choose between when starting a new game, which then have different stats, all of them. You combine these with, with helpers that give you some extra bonus to skills or to the will and imagination. There are more campaigns. We have something called Andromeda Returns, a good follow-up campaign. It's a standard game, um, uh, but you measure your success uh, in achievement points at the end of the game, so you can see how good you, you played. Bachelor in Distress, you help uh, a poor lad who has got himself into trouble. The Great Clouds is... Uh, uh, well, another campaign consists of three chapters. There's a solo game, one of my favorites. You basically play the game backwards and have a number of limitations on how you may use uh, uh, different things in the game. So in Discord is a, a competitive version of the game, and there are more uh, campaigns being written. It's pretty easy to write more, more campaigns and fun as well, so I expect there will be quite a few eventually. And that's it. Thank you for uh, watching this video, and I hope you find uh, the Andromeda board game interesting. Bye.